This is one of the knives that I've been wanting to make since I first started making knives in general. It's a Yanagi Ba, it's a single bevel. These are made pretty much exclusively to excel at slicing fish. And this is an example that my friend Taro lent me as a study piece. Um, actually, this is, this is like the knife that got me into knife making because I was watching those YouTube videos late at night and I saw a lot of Japanese smiths forge and finish these out. And for some reason, I just decided, you know what, like, that's what I want to do with the rest of my life. I haven't done one, even though I've been making knives for... So nine years I've been making knives, and I haven't done one of these, even though this has been, like, the primary inspiration. And there's a few reasons for that. Number one is they're just... These are really fucking hard. Um, the thing with, like, a chef's knife is you can have a variety of different profiles, geometry styles. As long as you hit a few key things, it's probably gonna work really well. With these, they're, they're very specific. There's a lot of technical nuances that are pretty strict on these designs, and the difficulty is knowing like what's important, how much leeway you have with the design, and what, what features you have to kind of adhere strictly to to make sure that it actually works well. Before we start getting real deep into these, let's talk about the basic design, functionality, and geometry. These are long and slender in profile, and of course, single bevel. So if you look at the cross section right here, you can see that the edge is pushed all the way to this side for a right-handed knife. And then this back side isn't actually flat, it's hollow ground. You'll hear me mention the Ura or the Ura Oshi a lot. Um, the Ura Oshi is this small, flat sectioned, that kind of wraps around the perimeter of the, the backside of the grind. And the ura refers to the, the whole backside itself. Don't ask me why they're made that way. I've heard that it's to reduce drag and stuff or something. I think the main important thing about these knives is that their geometry allows for a very acute angle um, while maintaining a thick spine. So these knives are generally heavier and thicker than you'd expect. So with these knives, there's four main problems that I've kind of broken it down, at least for me. Number one, information, trying to know how these are made in general and what is actually proper for these knives. Number two, dealing with the construction styles and the warp. Um, that's gonna be a big one. Three is doing the ura, the, the backside concave grind. Trying to get that crisp, clean, and just even in general is gonna be a real challenge and is just gonna take a lot of practice. And then the handle, I have to figure out just some solution that's removable, lightweight, and just elegant. But for the pr first problem, there's not much information out there. Like you can find like the thicknesses, you can find out that there is a concave grind on the reverse side. But other than that, I don't even know how to use this. Like with a chef's knife, you can kind of figure out how to hold it. You can figure out how to use it. There's different ways to use it with this like but yeah in general there's just not much information out there and a lot of the information that's out there might not necessarily correct um, I actually visited John from Japanese Knife Imports and I spent a little bit of time with them talking about all the little nuances and just in general getting feedback on a, on a practice piece before I went to go visit John Broida, I made an attempt at my first one. John and I already talked a bit beforehand, so I knew some of the details on these knives, but I needed to try to get a feel for it. I did a simple radius just to see how the metal moves, and I knew the blade was going to warp, I just didn't know exactly how much. The important thing at this point was just to get context, not to have a finished piece. I did a lot of the work in this first practice piece, like literally less than 24 hours before driving to LA and meeting up with him. If you don't know who John Broida is, he is one of the most knowledgeable people out there on Japanese knives and sharpening. Go check out his channel. Yeah, It's tricky, you know, like initially everyone was buying all these radius platens and thinking you just like stick it against that and that's how you do the backside. That's what everyone says. And like, but it's, it's not that. And you can see that it's not that when you look at them. Uh, so like for example the red handled one, this one. So if you put this here you'll see that it gets like shallow towards the ends and then oh. and then like the bottom part's pretty flat in the center. That's super shallow. Right? So it's like but it's it comes like this. But like why? Is that is that 
something you would notice as you're cutting or is that just the way they do it? So he, he does that because he feels like uh, it gives greater longevity to the knife in terms of how long the, the uraski lasts uh, and, and does a little bit better job at releasing stuff without creating air pockets that create suction. But it's still, it's done in like three different stages. It's like a compound. Yeah. So all of them are compound. There's yeah. not one that you'll see where a dude just like sticks it down. You have to think about like what overall design you're going for and how best to achieve it. And so generally speaking, you'll see that all these guys do pretty compound bevels. How? And this one is... I, I can't even like wrap my head around how you do that consistently. The same way you do your stuff is you just do it so much. Huh. Man, when I was working in the mine yesterday, it was just warping every single pass I took. Learning how to straighten in the way that these guys are doing, so like using chisel hammers specifically, is, is like a game changer. I'm, then, gonna, yeah. I'm gonna show you the one I was working yeah. with. Yeah. There's still a lot to do, a lot of trimming and stuff like that. And I was getting it almost straight until I started like finalizing it, and then I was just finalizing it. So you start the bend that starts like here to here, and apex is like right around there, right? Right. But I was trying to get the Ura like tight along the edge of the profile, it's so hard. Well, that's that's why that compound thing makes it a lot easier to do. Mm. So like when you're a little bit steeper, kind of closer to the edge, it's a lot easier to do that kind of stuff and you have a little bit more shallow thing in the center. That makes sense. Uh, and then the, the thickness is also pretty pretty thick. And then it looks like the, the convexing is a little bit too pronounced on the, on the bevel side of stuff. You end up with a lot of pressure being exerted against food in that way because of how convex it is. A thinner, flatter overall. Yeah. Let me go see if I have one that I sharpened so you can see like what the end result looks like of how much yeah. and how much curvature there is. After visiting John, I learned a lot on these knives. And while that information is really helpful, it only really takes me so far. Next is just to practice a bunch more and try out a lot of things and see what sticks. The second problem that I'm facing with these is warp. So most knives that I'm doing, they're pretty symmetrical and you can deal with warp in a few different ways. One of them is just grinding it straight, which is pretty straightforward. You could just, if it's warped one way, you can grind off more on that side. With these, you can't really do that. They're made a few different ways. Like this one is the more common like cladded construction. So it's got soft steel on one side, hard steel on the other, and that's done for ease of straightening and also ease of maintenance. So with this, with the soft steel, you could take a mallet and you could tap it and you can bend it kind of straight. I can't do this because I don't know how to forge weld this type of construction. It's just not in my skill set. And it's, it's one of those skills where you have to practice it for years and years before you get even comfortable with it. So I have to do like a mono steel or differentially hardened steel. And that has its own issues with trying to correct the warp. So this is a practice piece that I've been working on. The first thing I noticed right off the bat is it warps during heat treat and you can kind of correct it, but then once you start grinding it, it'll warp on you while grinding. There's a few different ways to combat warp. The first one is trying to hit it, a mallet or a hammer. That won't work with a hard steel. The second way is to kind of clamp it and shim it in the opposite direction. So if this is warping this way, I can bend it the opposite direction and put it in temper. Um, it usually comes out straight enough where you can correct it. Another way is just grinding it straight, which you can't really do with this because it's such an asymmetric grind. One thing that I've noticed is when I'm grinding on one side, it'll tend to warp on that side. So if I, if I grind this on the right side, this is the right side for me, it's gonna wanna sort of bend towards that side. And so I was trying to balance how much I'm grinding on each side and eventually kind of grind and have it warp and compensate and end up straight. Um, that's kind of a crude way to do it. And it doesn't really work when you're getting to the finishing stages because it's going to warp some other form. The last way to combat warp, which I'm going to try out, is John told me about carbide chisel hammers. I've heard about it a long time ago and then I just kind of dismissed it because that sounds a little sketch. But one of my friends, Salem Straub, he actually has been doing the chisel hammer technique with success. And apparently a lot of Brazilian bladesmiths use it. So we'll see how well that works overall. Um, so instead of buying like a $50 piece of carbide or whatever and stick it in a hammer or buy a carbide chisel, I made one. I had a piece of carbide laying around. I stuck it to a piece of my house that I ground down. Extremely sophisticated tool. You can see it's fixed in there. I think people who are into hammers would beat you to death. 
refer to that as a hammer. I'm fully expecting it to not work at all, to break this piece of shit, or to snap my blade in half. Now that Don can't hear me, we could talk about how much of a piece of shit he is. I'll be dipped in shit. If it doesn't work? No, I think it's working. That's great. So the warp was mostly here. And now I'm focusing on this area right, right here. Yeah, so and it was pretty bad, but now it's it's less bad. You can see this, like it was all bent around here. Yeah, that's a lot better. <laughs> and the idea is this is grounded to some sort of ghetto like peen, like a cross peen. And so this is gonna wanna spread and move the metal this direction like that. So that's why I'm hitting like this and not like this, because this, this is gonna wanna widen it like that. Problem solved, right? I, I'm gonna have to modify this a little bit. I think this is a little bit sharp. <laughs> You're gonna have to modify it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It is a little sharp, but like it moved. It, it definitely straightened out so that um, I could grind it. Like that is, Right, not very far removed from like the first bladed weapons that he man ever made. <laughs> stick, stick sharp rock in wood. <laughs> Hit animal till dead. I mean, it's working. It's in there. It's true. And I don't really need to smash anything. Hey, there. I'm not shitting on like ancient technology. You're just shitting on what I've done. Yeah. Yeah. Like those are our forefathers, man. Like. But the proof of concept works, so that's a... Uh, proof of concept? That's that's a piece of kit now. Oh yeah, this is that, sorry, not proof of concept, the finished product. Yeah. Um, you can buy it's it not, on my website. It's, and, not, <laughs> it's not often you get it in one go. I'm actually shocked with that works. After grinding some more, the blade continued to keep warping as I took off more material. It was a lot of back and forth between grinding and straightening. I'm trying to correct the warp here um, using the carbide hammer, but so far it's not really getting it as far back as I want it. So now I have a bit more of a feel for using this little carbide hammer. It's pretty good for fine tuning small warps and twists that need just a tiny bit of adjustment. This warp is a little bit too prominent though, so I'm going to do the shim and temper method. Between using the small carbide hammer for fine tuning and using the shimming and tempering for big ones, I think with a lot of practice, I can figure out how to deal with the warp. The next big problem is the hollow grind, the Ura, on the back side. I was actually fearing this part even if it was a simple radius because trying to do it and get a, a sharp, like basically a sharp rim on the edges, like you can see on this one, the, the rim on the Ura is super like crisp and narrow. It just seems like something that you have to practice for a long time to be able to get clean like that. But now that I've learned that they're actually not a simple radius and it's a sort of compound, that changes a lot of things and I'm just going to have to try a bunch of stuff out. I, I have no idea how it's going to go. I tried doing a simple radius and then kind of using a wheel at an angle. I tried shaping the platen into some sort of like trapezoid shape. I'm going to try some diamond files, I'm going to try stones, we'll see. Yeah, that's, that's a complete unknown and I have no idea how it's going to go. First thing I'm trying out is using this 5 inch wheel to get the basic geometry. It's the only wheel I have so I'm just kind of figuring it out. I'm trying to focus towards the edge and feather in that steeper angle, then try to blend everything in. Two immediate difficulties came right up. 
One, it was pretty much impossible to get a remotely uniform grind. It was just a huge wavy mess and no amount of trying to muscle through and blending it was really working out. Two was, it was really difficult to creep in the grind closer to the edge. I wanted to get it as close as possible without over grinding it, but I really can't see what I'm doing and I definitely can't feel it. I'm either grinding too far from the edge because I'm scared or I get closer and I blow right through and it takes me a lot of steps backwards. This crude approach on the grinder isn't really working so far, so next I'm going to try to do some handwork to clean things up. I've gotten it like sort of close-ish somewhat, but I wanted to try these diamond files, see if that can help in any way. Um, the idea is to get it as close as I can and then kind of blend these by hand. But I don't know how well this is going to work, so we'll see. Oh god, that is abrasive. Oh, Jesus. I was trying stones out before, but they wouldn't really work because the stone would dish as I try to do it. And it wouldn't give me a crisp transition up to the, the edge. It's not really even taking off that, that much metal. It's just scratching the shit out of it. I don't think this is really going to work. Okay, so straight up, these diamond files were a huge waste of money. The really coarse one was just pretty much useless. It made gigantic gouges that were way too deep. The smaller, finer, little square one was better, but it still has the same problem with any other diamond abrasive. It shaves chunks of steel and then wedges them to create like really deep gouges. I didn't really learn my lesson, so I spent even more money to get a finer half round diamond file, only to realize the same exact thing. I still attempted to try to go as far as I could with them though, trying to mark out high spots and get the rough geometry with maybe the hope of sanding it smooth. The problem though is not with getting the rough geometry, the problem is trying to clean it up after. The more hand sanding I do, the more I wash out my transitions. Since these scratches and gouges are so severe, I'm just filing and sanding in circles and just wasting a lot of my time. So now I'm revisiting the grinder. Sometimes the best solutions are just the most simple, obvious ones. I had a couple of problems with the grinder before. Um, one, I couldn't really see what I was doing, so I just added new lights right above where my head is to see better. Two, the grinder was single speed, so I set up a new grinder with variable speed so I could slow things down. The two of these things together really made a huge difference, and with the slower speeds, I can use higher grip belts and get closer to the final geometry I want with more control. The closer I can get on the grinder, the better and cleaner the final results will be because there's just less shitty handwork to muddle things out after. I'm changing up my approach just slightly. John said a lot of the bladesmiths do the grind in sections. I talked to my friends Mike Quisenberry and Marco Mamasi to hear if they had any ideas on doing these and they both said the same thing. Do it in sections and then blend it together. I don't really have any other wheels right now, so I'm trying to do the hollow grind towards the edge and the spine as tight as I can, and then I'm actually tilting the blade at a diagonal to grind out the middle section. It's not the most pretty thing ever, but it's actually working better than anything else I've done so far, which isn't really saying all that much. After I got it as close as I comfortably could on the grinder, I'm sanding it out. It's still kind of a wavy mess, but at least the edges are a little cleaner and tighter than before. Some of the high spots I'm trying to take down with the stone, which kind of sort of works. This isn't the most elegant method out there, but for now I think it's a feasible option to try to get just a functional Yanagi ball. The tip is a real bitch, and I'm not really sure how I'm going to tackle that. I think mostly it's going to be practice on the grinder, but I might be able to make it prettier with a Dremel. Mm, maybe. Um, shit. I've been working on these for like, I feel like it's been a month now or something like that, on and off. I'm running into a wall. I'm getting it pretty close, but the last 10% of these knives is taking me the longest amount of time. So the first big challenge was 
warp and I feel like I've got that pretty much down like after doing these I feel like I'm a lot better as a knife maker just to deal with warp in general and for the most part like we've got it we've got it pretty much figured out it's a pain in the ass sometimes but through the combination of kind of predicting where it's gonna warp and fixing big warps with like shimming and tempering or doing the the smaller touch-ups with the carbide chisel for the most part with enough time i could figure out a knife and get it straight enough the problem that i'm running into now is doing the backside dry in that concave the ura i've gotten pretty close through using the small wheel well smallish wheel i'm using this five inch diameter wheel and i'm doing it in three parts so i'm doing the the edges on the spine and the actual edge itself. I do one middle section to get the depth and then I tilt at an angle and get that compound, almost like a fry pan shape. And functionally, I'm getting a pretty good compound concave grind. The problem is when I'm getting closer to the final width of the Uraoshi, that, that flat rim, I can't get it clean and crisp enough. Right now I'm, I'm freehand grinding it on this wheel and I can get it pretty close and for the most part I'm getting it close enough, like I'm hitting the, the width that I want. But going towards the tip where it's starting to curve and get closer to this narrow section and also just when I'm on the final grits on here, every now and then I'll just slip a little tiny bit and it sets me back the whole entire process. And that's been a common theme amongst all of these, like pretty much these four knives right here, I'm running into the same problem. And I've tried diamond files, I've tried stones, I've tried sandpaper, I've tried an assortment of processes on here, and I'm still hitting the same problem. Um, this second grinder with the variable speed is definitely helping a lot. Um, now that this is actually in a good position and I've got good lighting, the lighting has helped tremendously. I've gotten to the point where I'm confident that I, I've hit the overall geometry that I want. It's just now it's the fit and finish and how clean the grind is. I'm actually gonna divide this video into two parts and this is where this is gonna end. I'm gonna figure out how to get the grind exactly where I need it and get it clean, crisp, and just not ugly. Right now there's too many warbles, too many divots and nasty shit in there. Um, I think the next step for me is to figure out how to do some sort of work rest so I can actually lay the blade flat on there without it like catching and I overgrind the edge. So that'll be the first step is making some sort of work rest where I can pivot this around and change the angle and actually be able to control it on the grinder better. And then the hard part is the final stage of finishing these. So this is the one that I've got closest to finishing. This is basically, I think, as good as it gets functionally, but it runs into the same problem. I can't get the Ura Oshi super tight and super clean. I need to figure out a way to finish these as, as high of a grit as possible on the grinder and to do as minimum handwork after that to, to get it as clean as I can. And then once I have a functional blade, I'll do a handle, I get it tested, and then go from there. And I think, I think after that, um, that's it, right? And so next video, hopefully I'll have a process figured out. And I mean, I really hope that I have a finished knife soon so that I can actually get it tested and used. Till next time.